Welcome to GAC. I am Stormy Warren and joining me here right now, one of the true Renaissance men, not only in country music, but in all the entertainment world. He's a multi-platinum two-time Grammy winning artist who has found success on the big screen as well, including Panic Room and his very classic performance in Sling Blade. Dwight Yoakam, welcome to our GAC set. Stormy, thank you for having me. Good. You know it's why good we're to be here? here? You know why we're here? <clears throat> we're going to walk down memory memory lane just a little bit. We're going to take a look down your. This, this is uh, my life. A chunk of your career in music video. This is your life. When was the last time you actually took your videos and watched them back to back and watched? I haven't uh, ever. I don't think watched them in any kind of real order. Or there's a lot of them, and 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 usually. I've watched the the most recent. If, in in the case of probably about half of the videos, I think I think in total is about thirty. Sure. I've I've directed uh, quite a few, a lot of them, about half. And and uh, those, you know, I, I I watched more thoroughly probably over the in terms of just having been involved with them in the cutting and conceiving them and you know directing them in all aspects of it, but. It's been, you know, I mean, I, the, the most recent stuff is what I've watched recently. I haven't watched sure. a lot of these the in old, quite a while. The, the old days, 20 years ago that was, the, when you first launched and were a pioneer or a lead lemming as we were just talking lead about. Lead lemming, <laughs> what is a pioneer? A lead lemming. <laughs> the lead lemming. You broke down the barriers, you created a, a, a the one music. One that walks you off the cliff. <laughs> you created a music video. The world. Donner Party, they were pioneers. <laughs> Yes, but everyone has to start and everyone has to follow. You can never say that you followed into the music video world. No, no, I wandered in early. <laughs> was there, well, there in were, I said, we, the first clip that I did actually was for um, an off-the-wall show, I think, that, that was on an early kind of MTV thing, believe it or not. Really? Not even, there was not really much country music television at the time no, no. there was not much there was no such thing as TNN the old TNN had uh, maybe it just begun in 84 but what you were seeing on uh, on the music channels was you know predominantly pop rock mm -hmm. and even that was is kind of you know different than what it is now in terms of video fare it was uh, uh, early it's, on and things and, have changed <clears throat> yeah and um, the first one we did was uh, we started playing it in late '85. Sherman Halsey yeah. directed it. It was Honky Tonk Man, and and he did a great job with that. And it was his idea. I can't take credit for this to go downtown in the old Fremont Street of Las Vegas. I might add, it was about three years ahead of them boys and you two going down there and doing it. You once again. Now, I'm just saying. Lead lemming. <laughs> I don't know where Enough. they got the idea, but. <laughs> Enough talking about it. Let's take a look at it. From 1986, <laughs> Sherman Halsey 20 this. years ago, a very young Dwight, very young Sherman Halsey. Here is Dwight Yoakam's Honky Tonk Man. Not like you're an old man. Well, I am. That was Dwight Yoakam's Honky Tonk Man, and we were just talking how progressive that looks. 20 years ago. 20 years. Well, you know what, that, in, 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 in deference to Sherman Halsey, I mean, he did a great job directing that. And he also, at the time, we were both living in L.A., and... and there's a lot of L.A. aesthetic to that video, sure. I think, where we shot it and just the, the club scene that was going on there. Well, you can see that a lot of people are still ripping off what you guys tried to create back then. And we got a lot more, a lot more with Dwight Yoakam's video well, journey. about ripping off. <laughs> <laughs> Borrowing. You know, when you follow a lemming, you get what you pay for. <laughs> you get for. what you pay for. We'll be right back. Welcome back to GAC. I'm hanging out here with... My good friend now, Dwight Yoakam. This has been fun. This is very loose. Just taking a walk down, down memory lane. It, it truly is. Like you said, you haven't seen these videos in a while. But, Remember uh, me? We're forced, I'm the one. We're anyway. making you uh, lift those barriers. That was a weird video. Dean Martin had a video. Do you remember this? Early Dean Martin years had a video. of MTV? Yes. One of the craziest. He walked around the pool and he pushed mannequins, women, <laughs> you know. Female, what was this? Female mannequins. He shoved them into the pool. Like, literally, the first year or two that you could tell how far they were going to get material to put on music television. <laughs> Desperate. That, yeah, like in 83, 82, he would, remember me, I'm the one that loves you, in a tux, yeah. walk around a swimming pool, pushing female mannequins into the pool. 
And with those classic bad guys, with, with, a, with a you know martini glass and a cigarette. But are you going to knock him? You can't. You, you can't, can't knock, knock him. Dean Martin. I mean, that is that's a pioneer. That's a, he's, a, he's another lead a lemming. Lead lemming. <laughs> <laughs> begin with our lead limbing theme. Well, we're not here to talk about Dean. We're here to talk about you. Thank and the, you. the next video we're going to show is one of my favorite streets of Bakersfield because you're hanging out with one of my idols as well, Mr. Buck Owens. What a cool dude. How much have you Speaking learned from that man? Speaking of a pioneer. How much have you learned from that man? Well, you know, I learned a lot after meeting him. I learned a lot before I met Buck. I learned a lot about how I wanted to make my records and what I wanted my music to sound like, and I learned a lot about the California country music sound. Which define you know that. About. Define well, that. Well, the Bakersfield sound, I, I refer to it as the California country music sound because it really wasn't cut for the most part in Bakersfield. The guys played and lived up there. They, they would play at the old Blackboard Club and, and various right. places around Bakersfield, and they would then drive the 100 miles south to work as session players at Capitol LA. Records in on Vine Street right in Hollywood. Sure. In fact, Merle Haggard's Okie from Muskogee was was recorded ironically, given how that song, you know, lyrics <laughs> yeah. rail against everything West Coast in right, Hollywood. The heart of heart of yeah, Hollywood. Hollywood. And Buck was so instrumental in creating that California sound. And sure. and I uh, I'm a huge admirer of Buck Owens uh, guitar playing. Merle Haggard says to this day that Buck Owens at a moment in time was the greatest lead guitar player ever in the history of country music I agree. from the late 50s to the early 60s before Don Rich took over the duties for Buck and Steve. Yeah, Buck he, played a lot of the lead He guitar. underrates himself as a guitarist, doesn't no, he? No, but he played a lot of those lead yeah. guitar uh, parts were, were Buck playing. It was Buck playing the guitar on his own records, but other people's records also. Real quick, before we toss to this video, uh, Buck and Merle, I asked them to define the, the Bakersfield sound, and Merle leaned back and goes, what me and Buck do? <laughs> That's a great answer. Here it is, exactly. Streets of Bakersfield yeah. from Dwight's 1988 album, Buenos Noches from a Lonely This is room. what me and Buck do. This is. You, Buck, and Merle. You know, there's only one problem that I see with this car. What is it? What is it? Well, it's Buck got, on it's, it? Yeah, it's got Buck, What's but I think, I think we need... Dwight down here somewhere. Well, I was going to have that put on there. That's <laughs> classic. The streets of Bakersfield with Buck I love Owens. that he says, but Dwight, Dwight's six or seven letters. Like, well, which is it, dude? <laughs> six or seven. <laughs> six Typical or seven Buck. letters. Huh? But he'll convince that you either the, way. Oh, yeah, that was the problem, huh, Buck? Six, seven, or eight letters. Or the, five. <laughs> the Buck's been laying low a little bit lately. Or, have, or you, have you kept up with him? Yes. We, we I, I'm actually going up and playing uh, uh, New Year's Eve at the Crystal Palace. <laughs> with Vince Vaughn, and oh, Vince Vaughn's no. taking his Wild West comedy tour for to one night Palace. only. One night only. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Uh, Vince did a 30 days and 30 nights sure. run with it. It was hysterical. And, uh, and uh, you know, Buck uh, is, is, a, is friends with Vince. Uh, Vince went up when I went up in 1998 at Buck's uh, birthday bash uh, he went up with me and he presented him a knife from psycho which buck proceeded to chase me around on stage I was with, there what remember I was that there. With, yeah. and it was a real I kept Vince and I kept trying to say dude, dude it's a real like, knife buck, it's a real <laughs> I remember that it's a real knife I was there yeah that buck was, a, was reenacting yeah. the stabbing scene from psycho every, all these people are scattering across <laughs> oh, yeah. the stage no 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 oh that's funny <laughs> it's like whoa but, so so Vince and, and buck we met at that time and, and uh, our friends and, and Vince wanted to go up there and do this on New Year's Eve and he, he Vince just loves Buck and, and, and as many people do and is a big fan of his music sure. so we're going to go up there New Year's Eve so I've stayed in touch with Buck. Yeah. We save a ticket I think I want to go up there. Alright All right, well we got time for a quick commercial or two but please keep your seat we're going to continue our trip down video memory lane with Mr. Dwight Yoakam. Keep it tight right here on GAC. Remember me? <laughs> Welcome back, Stormy Warren here with Dwight Yoakam for a look back at his incredible video career. Next up is one from 1991, It Only Hurts When I Cry. Tell me a little bit about that. That's kind of a, that's a moody video. Well, it is a moody video. I, Pierce Plowden directed this, and, and he did a great job. We talked about I said, you know, what if we had kind of, um, you know, allegorical kind of references sure. to, you know, things. And so that's why there's the mime-faced cop that's in the mime. street directing traffic. and. And the girl, you know, that's out there kind of trying to make her way in life, shall we sure. say, that's kind of hitching and 
It's gritty. I mean, there's or a whole gritty. Hook and theme. a ride. Would that be appropriate? Yeah, hook and a ride. Yeah, but you she, can say that. She's kind of yeah, lost. There are a lot of lost souls in this video. Uh, Roger Miller and I wrote the song, which is amazing by itself. Yeah, it was an amazing experience for me because he's one of the. You can truly apply the term genius to Roger Miller <laughs> and, and his his talent and his his mind. And I was really blessed for having uh, been able to have that experience with him. He you know, he passed away about a year after that it was the number one single. And and wow. and um, I'll I'll be forever. Is that one of his last? Grateful to him for doing. Yeah, it was the last. It was the last chart record that he wrote, and wow. it was the last experience that I guess you know he shared with somebody as you know as a writer and 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 uh, uh, we just had a ball. I had the idea for the song. We were doing a tribute to Willie Nelson at the Pantages Theater, and I said he had he had met me previously at at um, at um, uh, Willie's Farm Aid in 1986. Yeah. Just a young. Look at me, lead I'm lemming. Right. <laughs> I was just a yeah, little old wee bitty little the lead theme lemming. Of the show, just lead a wee lemming. little old tiny old bitty <laughs> lemming. And I was anyway in Austin at one of the farm aids, and 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 uh, Roger and I met there, and we reacquainted ourselves at this tribute to Willie at the Pantages Theater. I said, I've got. I, I told him I was a huge fan of his song um, that he wrote for Ray Price called "Invitations to the Blues." Uh, and I, I was thinking about cutting it. I said, but I've got a song idea. I'd be honored if you'd write it with me. I said, I've got a title. It only hurts when I cry. And he looked at me and went, I like that. Yeah. And I, we wrote it together, and, and, and it became this video. I'm very proud of the video and of it being a number one. Uh, this really you should, in his last. That's amazing. Let's take a look at it. Dwight, he also sang Harmony. Why don't you introduce it for us? Uh, this is the video for the song that I was just talking about, having written with Roger Miller. And, uh, there is a melancholy to the video, and it's appropriate, given that it was the last thing that, that uh, I think is a chart record Roger Miller uh, wrote. It only hurts when I cry. Dwight Yoakam, we are taking his walk down memory lane through music video, and we, but we got to take a quick commercial first. Stick around. Plenty more great videos from this man right here, the king, Lee Lemming. And we are back with Dwight Yoakam as we take a retrospective look at some of the most important videos of his career. And up next is a video that I know is very special to you for a number of reasons. Uh, a thousand miles from nowhere, the director, Carolyn Mayer, you want to well, talk about her? Well, yeah, there's an irony uh, uh, involving Carolyn uh, Mayer Bug, who uh, directed not only a thousand miles from nowhere and in Fast As You, we we co-directed Thousand Miles. Now I'll get into that in a second, but but the the first video she directed for me was uh, the first single off of this time, and that was Ain't That Lonely Yet. Right. And um, I say there was an irony uh, surrounding Carolyn and and my relationship, and and uh, uh, that particular video. We, we were sh shooting that downtown L.A. in 1993, early 93, on the morning that they bombed the World Trade Center for the first time when they drove the vans underneath the building. Wow. And we watched it in kind of grainy telestial TV antenna of Channel 5 News. We heard about it when we were about two-thirds of the way through the shoot day, and, and, and we both stood there in my that little trailer and watched that video and watch the, watch the chaos in New York and um, little did we know that uh, you know a few years later in 2001 she'd be on an air airline flight that was the first airline that went into the World Trade Center on September 11th she and her mother were tragically killed in that 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 uh, uh, you know act of terrorism and that's amazing. Uh, she had, had left. Uh, she'd been uh, taking her two daughters for their uh, first semester at Rhode Island School of Design, and uh, was on the way back out of Boston that morning. And, and um, so I can't I can't ever talk about that without being melancholy, uh, and these videos without being melancholy about Carolyn Mayer Bugue and her and John Bugue, who's 
who was her husband, music executive, was the executive at Warner Brothers, is the man who first let me loose in an editing room. And, and John suggested, <laughs> he said, on, uh, I believe, the Turn It On video, which predates mm -hmm. this, he said, you should go in there and cut it. There was an editor named Jim Gable, and he said, yeah. no, no. I said, well, I don't know that I, he said, you have something you're seeing in your mind, in your head, that's how you make these. So I went in and did that, and that led to, you know, doing other things. And then Carolyn, who was not married to John yet at the time, was a director of, of, of uh, great, you know, with, with uh, a lot of credits and was very well respected. And sure. She did that video, and then Thousand Miles From Nowhere, we did together. Um, and I had a bit of an argument with her over, uh, it was nothing, there was no anger involved. It, it was just a, a friendly and, and, and uh, ribbing kind of disagreement about how we cut the clip. Mm -hmm. And she had a cut that she loved, and I said, I, I went in and did a cut. And we, she came to the, to the editing room, and I said, well, Carolyn, what, what part of my cut don't you like, do you think? <laughs> I said to the editor, I said, you know what, run them both at the same time. Let's run them Let's see side one. by side, picture by picture, and just see how it, you know, where were I said, because I'm using some of the same shots you used, and you're using some of the things. She said, I know, but I love that other thing. I love. So it ran through. And by the time I got to the end of the video, just the first run of it, I, I turned to the editor and said, I said, I said you know what? I think that's. I looked at her and I said, that's the video. <laughs> and she said, well, which one? I said, both of them. Merge them and together. that's what we did, and, and and there's an interesting synergy to when we both picked the same shot and when yeah. we didn't. Yeah. It's the blending but, of the minds. That's but great. I'll, I'll, you know, God bless Carolyn Marabug and 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 her family, and and uh, and I'll, I'll just, you know, forever carry her in my heart. From 1993, that was a thousand miles from nowhere. Now, quick question: We looked at your two videos, Carol Mayer, and your video side by side. Which one was which? I, I was watching, and I thought at one point it was mine was right, and then I thought, no, it's the left. I don't remember. And I can't tell you. Another piece of trivia: Who else is in that video? Well, you get a few glimpses there of a young very Kelly young, Willis, very talented Texan. Yeah, very Kelly talented. Willis. Uh, Kelly Willis, beautiful, and was gracious enough to come and stand in the river, well, uh, wave at the trains that went by. That's awesome. And you did your own stunt work on that, moving on a train going 30, 40 miles an hour. Yeah. It was just absolutely amazing. It wasn't as uh, scary as the four people up in the helicopter getting those helicopter shots. <laughs> Good point. We'll take another quick pause in the action, but sit tight. A double shot from Dwight is on the other side. I don't think I can take it, including one he directed. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are going to make a light speed jump ahead to the year 2003 for Dwight's next video. It's called The Back of Your Hand, and it's a beautiful, beautiful I think song. there's tissue on my lip. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, was let's that talk whipping about... 10 years ahead that got me? <laughs> you ran into a More cotton ball along the way. A load of lemmings. <laughs> <laughs> the inside stuff you just don't get when the no. camera's off. <laughs> it's about being a pioneer. Yeah. Or a lead lemming. It makes sense if you're with us for this whole show. Anyway, yeah. we're talking about in you the back of been. your hand. You should have been. See what you miss when you don't watch? From beginning to end. You could TiVo this, but no. You're too lazy to set it. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Ignorant. <laughs> Let's talk videos. It's, we're talking the back of your Is hand. Is she upset? Okay. No. Gosh, I mean, we're going to roll. Yeah. We don't stop for anything here. We're all happy. Happy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the back of your hand, I love this video, I love the song, let's keep going. Back of your hand was directed by Margaret Malandrucolo. Oh, I let you say it. Gosh. Mm. What a beautiful name for a beautiful woman. And a really talented director. She's a still photographer, that's her, her first professional pursuit was uh, shooting a lot of, uh, you know, commercial photos for advertisements. Yeah. And uh, she came actually to a show of mine in 2002 and shot some live shots without my, you know, I mean, she had a uh, photo pass, but I got them at the office some months later. I said, you know, I should talk to whoever this photographer is. She shot the Population Me album cover, yeah. and uh, she had been directing videos. She's from uh, Toronto, Canada, and uh, is a very talented director and did a great job with this. I think she, you know, it was interesting. I, she brought a woman's perspective to, sure. to the song and to the video. And to you. 
Yes, <laughs> me. You know, who would thunk it? A lead lemon. A lead lemon. Being led around touch. like a little child. <laughs> Here it is from the album Population Me. Back of your hand. Gosh, I hope I make it through this show. Mm. <laughs> Give it up for gone, but you're still digging in the mine. And you're staring at the window, saying everything will be just fine. And keeping with the whole of the bear, every word seems out of line. No matter what angle you get, it's polished till it shines. You take a guess where I stand. Pick a number One or two Take a look Off the back of your hand Just like you know it You know me too When you say Who the hell am I living with What just went down Where did this come from from where all my colors faded brown When did it change? What's with the rage? Who's the dude with the extra roll? What's the verse, the line, the chapter, the page? You take a guess Where I stand Pick a number One or two Take a look Back of your hand Just like you know it You know me too You think you love Without any place left to go Like you need One of those kisses Long and slow First plan what it seems, but there's some things that I just know. Like you take two sugars with a splash of cream, you take a guess. Where I stand, I'll oh, pick a number. One, two, then take a look. Back in your hand, just like you know it. You know me too Yeah, like you know it You know me too Just like you know it You know me too well, That was Dwight Yoakam's Back of Your Hand. In fact, I'm learning to know you just like the back. What is it? Yeah, how yeah. many veins yeah. in the yeah, back of your hand? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I was completely taken with that song the first time I heard it. And I heard it on the set of Hollywood Homicide. Um, Greg Lee Henry, a very talented actor, was there visiting a friend of his, and, and he happened to stop by and play it for me. And I said, uh, "Can we skip back?" There was a, we, he had several songs on tape. And I said, "What was that?" <laughs> and it just hit. Could you. I record that? And he said, "I you know." That's sure, do it. And it became a number one video for me. Funny how the greatest ones find their way to you in the weirdest Sometimes. ways. Sometimes. Absolutely. Well, you know, we got one more break to go, and that's it. Time has flown through the history and career of Dwight Yoakam. But we're going to finish up strong with Dwight's brand new video right on the I other side. It would last longer than a short little 20 year blip. Welcome back. We are going to finish up our look back at the almost 20 year video career of Dwight Yoakam with his latest offering. It's a video for the song that is the title track of his brand new album. Blame the Vein. First of all, let's talk about this this brand new album. This thing came about as a result, really, of just surrounding yourself with a brand new bunch of guys, isn't it? Well, yeah, and some some guys that had played with me previously. On when I went into the studio, I actually began in uh, as, just as you know, circumstance would have it. I, I was hanging out at the clubs in late 2002 in L.A., and there's kind of a country rock scene that had exploded again. Yeah. And Keith Gaddis was a guitar player that was fronting his own band and hosting a, one of the nights or a couple of the nights at different clubs. And uh, the Sin City All-Stars, and he had a night called Eastbound and Down. And mm -hmm. 
I sat in with him, and the drummer, Mitch Marine, was playing, you know, at the time with Keith. And I said, Keith, would you come and maybe do a, this Christmas benefit with me just on, you know, I'm an acoustic, and he played mm -hmm. mandolin or whatever. And we had such a great time doing it. I said, you want to run out and do maybe four or five shows like this with me? Uh, because I've been threatening to do it since uh, the the Acoustic.net album that I put out in sure. 2000. <laughs> that led to 42 cities like that. Right. The Almost Alone Tour. I was having so much fun doing it that I thought, well, I've got to add, I've got to do some shows as a band. Sure. So we added a drummer, added an upright bass player, Dave Rill, and did that year like that. And that led to my going into the studio. But I did uh, enlist the services and, and, and the uh, the sounding board of Taras Pradanyak on bass, who played with me for 15 years, yeah. and and uh, Skip Edwards on keyboards, and uh, and then Keith who had been out with me the whole previous year. Sure. So I had I had folks around that I I knew I could trust their opinions on on and different things, and and um, that led to the Blaine the Vane album, and that's how you know I I recorded it most of 2004, and uh, it will actually be in February 20 years since the Honky Tonk Man video came out. And Blame the Vein, this particular video, uh, I uh, I did with um, uh, the woman who is the beautiful, uh, gracing presence on the album cover uh, on the inside, yeah. and that's Donna Feldman. Nice. And uh, she was gracious enough to come and be a part of the video and, and give us that gorgeous view of those beautiful legs as they come down the catwalk and, it and kind of send me up and it's actually kind of an homage in some ways what I consider the iconoclastic talk about a lead lemming or a pioneer in videos <laughs> the, the Robert Palmer video that we all know for Addicted to Love it's yeah. been actually sure, yeah, covered point. by some people uh, you know Shania's and this was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek reference to that That's with the sure. girls in suits and, well let's kick off Dwight's third decade in this wacky business it's the debut video from his new album of the same name. Here is Blaine the Vane. Anything that you want, that it all ends up the 
Playing the vein from Dwight Yoakam. We've eaten up every bit of time in the I've show. I've talked too long and yes, too much. And we're getting yelled at by Sorry, everybody. Sorry, oh, oh, back there in the control room, they're, they're screaming. Upset. They are screaming. Shut him up! Please, <laughs> shut him up! <laughs> we're shutting him up. Dwight Yoakam, thanks for hanging out with us. This is a great time. Pleasure, Walk thanks down memory lane. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next time. A stroll, <laughs> a stumble, as it were.